Now we found that we could actually have something interesting out of uh, um, I1 variables or variables that are non-stationary. Only one case when we have, this is a very specific case, if we could have a combination of these two variables, that these two I1 variables that are stationary, that produce this error that is stationary error, okay? That's I0 error. And that's when we call these two variables uh, 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 co-integrated because they, they have a long-run relationship and the error correction model explain how that works. Okay, but what the question is, how, would we, how can we test for that? How can we test for co-integration? How can we know that these consumption and disposable income are co-integrated? We know that uh, they are both I1 and we can't just run the regression or using OLS using the data in level, but we could have an error correction model. We still, and, 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 and that can explain the short run and the long run dynamics of the relationship between these two variables, but we still need to test whether we would have uh, such combination of these two variables that we could produce I0 uh, error or uh, the uh, stationary error. Okay, so we need to test for uh, co-integration and um, we, 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 we actually it's very simple to do that because what we did with the unit root test we already looked at the unit root test the unit root test test for individual series but co-integration is relationship between m more than one variable so we got two or more variables okay so but it's still important to look at the integration proprieties of individual series so this is something you need to do in any case even if you're going to do an error correction model, you still need to make sure that the data are integrated of the same order. So if you have I1 on the right-hand side or I1, uh, Y, that means X is I1 as well, okay? So in all cases, you, you will do the unit root uh, test for individual uh, series, but you just keep in mind the integration, look at the relationship between these variables, uh, two or more, uh, uh, variables and the idea is whether they have uh, a long long run relationship or not and they need to be um, integrated of, of the same uh, order and this is what Engel Granger uh, test does so Engel and Granger in uh, 1987 they developed a two-step residual uh, based procedure for testing for co-integration. So we want to see whether we have co-integration. It's very straightforward. So you estimate the model, you obtain the residual, and then you test the residual, whether it is, because what we want to do, so we want to have variables that in level are I1, but then when we get, when we run the regression, we find the residual to be I0. And that's when we, we, we decide that we have co-integration. So it is necessary for this, for this test, it is necessary that um, individual that you still gonna run uh, a, a unit root test you're gonna you're gonna do a unit root test for individual series and these should be um, uh, non-stationary so you want to see whether they are stationary or not but in in the case of Engel Granger uh, procedure it's ap applicable only if both variables are non-stationary and from the same order I1 so if they were I2 then you will have to difference them to make them I1 before doing uh, this this test. So as we said, this this is this test is a uh, two-step test. So in step one, you run the regression using OLS, very straightforward. Yt regress on uh, Yt on Xt, and uh, use OLS to obtain the residuals from this. So this this v hat t is just the residual from uh, from OLS uh, from this uh, from the first one. And then what we want to do, we want to test these residuals, we see, uh, we test them for uh, stationarity. So in this regression here, we could test delta V uh, uh, hat uh, uh, equal rho uh, V hat T minus one. So you have got only one lag here. We can add more, more lags. And then you will see the decision if you accept, that means they are, it is non-stationary. That means that you can't go to the next step because that means the error term is not stationary, okay? So remember, we are interested in the case when we have two uh, 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 non-stationary variables, when we regress these, they produce a stationary or I0 error term, okay? But, but in this case, if, if, you, if, you, if you examine the residuals and they are not stationary, 
then there is no point to proceed because there's no contigration. There's nothing here, yeah? So this is most more likely to be uh, a spurious regression. But if you reject the null hypothesis in this step, that means you could move to the to check whether you have contigration or not. This is something we discussed. You could use the uh, um, to decide whether how many lags you have, etc. You can use the uh, archaic information criteria. So let's say now you reject and you know that the i uh, the errors or the residuals that came from the uh, uh, the first regression is i zero. So they are stationary. So now there's we we are thinking now of co-integration now because the the errors are are stationary. Okay, so. What would we do then? We could just obtain the error correction uh, model. Uh, uh, it, this is exactly the same structure we did. And uh, in this case, we could just use OLS to estimate this, uh, this model. Why are we using OLS? You see, all variables i0 because this is the change in yt. So if yt is i1, then delta yt will be i0. If xt i1, then delta xt will be i0. That means we can use OLS, though there's no problem. Okay? 